all 3D printing is going to require um, periodic maintenance and cleaning of parts on the printer. This is not a technology like a toaster. Dave with another crafted video. This is out of my 3D printer. 3D printer has commanded a lot of my attention because I've been working with it at work. And I purchased this printer to update my skills um, to modern uh, manufacturing techniques. And 3D printing is more and more becoming a manufacturing technique. And I've used this printer quite a bit. It's got about 12 and a half days of time, continuous printing time on it. Um, obviously that's over a few months, um, but I've uncovered some flaws in this relatively inexpensive uh, XYZ DaVinci printer. I have the 1.0A and we've hacked it over to Repetier host software and it's uh, it really the printer works beautifully I love it but it does have a flaw and I will try to explain to you what the problem is. In this printer there's a couple of wheels and those wheels kind of intersect right here in this gap and they have teeth in the wheels and they push the plastic down through this sensor and into the uh, stem here where it is heated in the head or the hot end they call this. This is a heating element. We can see the wires coming into it. This is a sensor that allows it to read the temperature and cycle the heater on and off. Now there's a point here at which the plastic is melted and a point above which it, it, we do not want it to be melted. And essentially where that barrier is is this stem, this stainless steel stem. We want that to be cold as possible. Yet this hot end, this is uh, 230, 210 to 230 centigrade, which is about 400 degrees F, um, is connected to this. So there's a lot of heat going into this stem. And if a little bit of plastic melts in this tube here, it will start to form a, a tight spot in the stem that the drive wheels cannot push the plastic through. And, and then you'll start to hear these drive wheels slip. It kind of sounds like a gear stripping, kind of a sound like about that rhythm as it's trying to push it in, but the teeth are slipping on the plastic. And we get too little plastic out here, and we end up building this ghost of a shape instead of a solid object like we want to build because we're only getting a tiny fraction of the amount of plastic that we need to build the object. So, I've learned a lot about this, and I think that uh, there's some things here that I know that have not been uh, mentioned online. Uh, for example, everybody thinks that this end in the DaVinci printer, this, uh, this extruder, this hot end, they call it the hot end assembly, everybody believes that this is not an all-metal assembly. They think that there is a... Um, Teflon tube or PTFE tube in here which is often used uh, to push the plastic through. Now the purpose of uh, this PTFE tube is to be a slick surface that can withstand a lot of heat. The problem is the PTFE tubes melt at around uh, or begin to degrade around 245 C which isn't very far away from where we're extruding the plastic. So a little bit of an accident or just a little bit of overheating will damage the tube and cause this same problem that we're discussing. Um, uh, there's a number of videos online about converting this uh, printer over to a hot end from a company called E3D. This is an E3D V6 hot end and that's what I intend to do with mine. The problem is this doesn't fit in the printer directly and I have to print some uh, parts um, in order to mount this. So that means I have to clean this unit one more time and get it working uh, so that I can at least print one run of parts. Um, and so that's really the purpose of why I have it apart again here. So we're 
currently we've got some kind of clog going on in here. Now everybody thinks the clog is at the nozzle, but it's not. It's in the stem. It's right in this area. Now these stems are polished inside to try to prevent the buildup of plastic as the as the uh, plastic line passes by any rough spots. Um, and polishing is more expensive than this Teflon tube. That's another reason why a lot of lower cost hot ends have the Teflon tube inserted in there. But this very definitely does not have any plastic parts in it. It's actually an all metal unit which is good quality. The problem, where this problem occurs is after long prints. And what is happening is this isn't a proper heat sink for getting rid of all the heat in the stem or keeping the stem cool. And this is a solid block. It has no fins on it other than this, you know, little thing here. The fan is not really aimed at it very well. So there's a lot of things here that really aren't optimized. This nut... It should be an aluminum nut because that would sink off heat even better than the stainless steel nut. Well, what I want to do is make a replacement nut out of this piece of hex stock. Now I've got some height here, like at least 10 millimeter, 10 or 12 millimeter, so I can build a tall nut and I can turn some fins into this. Now I don't want to interfere with this heat sink back here, so the bottom of my heat sink when I turn it on the lathe can't be any bigger than the point to point distance here because that's uh, capable of clear so we'll measure that point to point and then so there'll be a little standoff there and then a section of hex that I'll turn some fins into and this will give us a nut that sinks more heat away from this area and is actually in the airflow from the fan. Um, that in part could be enough um, if you own one of these printers to actually fix it. Now there are some other issues and that is um, there's clearance here in this hole. You can see just a little bit of wiggle. That means that when we tighten this nut and secure the hot end in here that this flange is seated against the aluminum and pulling heat into the aluminum but the stem here is really not touching inside of here. It might be in one little place touching, but it's not making contact everywhere. Um, a really, really, really nice part would require you to heat this up in order to slip this piece of stainless steel in. That requires some um, very close, high-tolerance machining um, to do that. So, you know, that's probably not going to be in a 3D printer that costs $500. In lieu of that, some uh, high temperature silicone based um, heat sink compound should be in this hole. Now there's a lot of heat sink compounds available for CPUs and uh, uh, various chips available on eBay, but none of them have a high enough temperature, temperature tolerance. Most of them um, start to fail around 200 C. And I don't know how they fail, but you know they can turn to carbon and become an insulator. So we don't really want to use those. Um, now I've ordered some. It, the tube cost me like $7. It's not here yet. It's got a 500C rating. Or 500F rating. I can't remember. But it's high enough to use in this application. Now I don't have it yet. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put this together with my nut that I've yet to make. Um, without the heat sink compound. And if the heat sink compound comes in before I get the printer all rebuilt with the new E3D V6 head, then um, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and finish the modifications on this and, and see if it fixes it completely. I think this is really a good head. It just has um, poor heat sinking and that's really the only thing that is wrong with these printers. Now they'll run for quite a long time you know, if, if you look at uh, what you can buy one of these printers for, let's see, I did about 12 and a half days, so that's uh, 300, um, about 300, let's just say 300 and a dozen hours. I actually paid $350 for my printer delivered to my door, 
which was a phenomenal deal, and I've been trying to buy another one at that price, and I, I cannot get one at that price again, so it must have been just a once-in-a-lifetime thing. But basically, before I've had to make this major modification, my cost to run the printer's only been a dollar an hour. So that's not too hateful. And the printer's not ruined or anything, it's just it has a flaw, and I don't want to be continuously cleaning this, this head out, so I'm going to start working on correcting the flaw. Now some people who criticize this printer because it's not, um, doesn't have the performance of a $2,000 printer, well, you know, when you buy one of the cheapest things available and it then um, has some weaknesses that you have to address, and but you cry about it because it's not as good as the $2,000 printer, well, you got a mental problem. That's, that's where you're really being a crybaby. You're not looking at, at it, this realistically. Um, this is a very low cost printer and you know I just expect that it's not going to be as good as a thousand or two thousand dollar printer now all 3d printing is going to require um, periodic maintenance and cleaning of parts on the printer this is not a technology like a toaster where you can buy uh, you know you can open a glossy box and, and be the expert in the neighborhood at making toast um, 3D printing is not as evolved as that, and perhaps it never will be. You're, you're going to have to work on your machine periodically. You're going to have to clean and adjust. You're going to have to look at flaws in the printing and figure out what needs to be cleaned or adjusted. You know, you're, it's just the nature of it. It's, it's not an, an exact perfect science. So, um, you know, if you get a printer and you have a couple little fumbles along the way, like I'm experiencing here, it's really not the fault of the printer. It's the nature of the technology. So, let's get busy and make a nut. Here's the tap size. It's a 6 by 1. Got the tap here. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to remove the heating element here. This is something that a lot of people do not know about these about these uh, printers. 